southwest Saskatchewan. Ancient rhythms echo through hills formed by glaciers, water, and wind. Forests high enough to have remained untouched by the time of ice allow us to imagine landscapes lost to history. The blood of the extinct fuels the economy, and every now and then, their bones give us a glimpse into very ancient lives. East End, the resting place of Scotty. Sometimes, rarely, do we arrive at a site where the erosion is just happening or has re recently happened and we discover those bones. Because if we didn't discover those bones, nature would have its course in a matter of months, if not uh, earlier, they're destroyed. So right about here, the rock layer that stretches from here across there, that's the extinction event. That's end of the dinosaurs. So as we slowly creep down the layer of rock, we start getting into Scotty's world and T-Rex and Triceratops and all the little nasty little things in between. We had wanted to get into this patch of Badlands for a few years and weren't able to. And in 1991, um, it, was, it was just me and my boss at that time um, started prospecting, looking for fossils here. Um, but the school teacher from town, uh, Robert Gephardt, um, came along and uh, wanted to learn how we find stuff. So where I'm standing right now, this is about 300,000 years before the, the mass extinction. The very, very, very last days of the dinosaurs. Some scraps of turtle. We walked this hill. Um, I, w I was at the bottom section Robert Gephardt was in the middle, and John Sturr was at the higher section. One of the most common fossils found. Robert says, oh, I found a few pieces of bone. One was a base of a tooth, and one was a vertebra broken open. And we found the layer that was coming out of, so that makes it even a little bit more interesting. But until you can clear off and identify what's being exposed, all you have are a couple of fragments that, that may be all that's there. So we have many sites like that where we haven't been able to get to, we don't exactly know what's in the hill, but we have enough work to keep us going year after year. In the spring of 94, I came out here in the, uh, on my holidays um, and I rediscovered the site that, that was found in 91 and started scraping away from the right layer of rock that the fossil was first found in. And then I found the tooth in the, in the maxilla, the tooth in the jaw. And for about five minutes, I just ran up and down the hill, trying to figure out in excitement, okay, we have this Tyrannosaurus rex skeleton. How am I going to get it out? We got a few more resources. And um, in late June of uh, 94, that's when we started the excavation. And really, it was only a small little square hole of the original bone. Um, that soon expanded to uh, nearly complete T-Rex skeleton. The Frenchman River Valley does not give up her secrets easily. Tim Tekarik returns every year to discover more. Dr. Emily Banforth will one day pick up where he leaves off. She has already spent many summers scouring the Frenchman formation. They're, they all look um, like from a horned dinosaur. What we'll have to do is come back with a little bit more time and shovels to uncover the layer that's coming from to see if there's more in situ. In 94, we had a big collecting operation with people uh, collecting the T-Rex, but also um, her, a triceratops skull from the other side of the valley. And in 95, 
um, me and my uh, staff person, uh, technician at that time, Wendy Sloboda, we came out prospecting. We started on the on the top up here, and she called me over and she found this found this chunk of uh, of rock, but she hadn't seen one like that before. And what she ended up showing me was a rock like this. And when we saw it, it looked like a, to us right away, it looked like a piece of copper light, a piece of fossil poop. But when we flipped it over and examined it and all the other pieces that I had found, we can see bone fragments in there. In fact, their bone fragments are actually parallel. So at the time of discovery of this thing in the summer of 95, unrelated to Scotty, uh, we knew right away that we had a chunk of T-Rex coprolite. And we didn't need any further experts to tell us that this is the only one known in the world. We have the rocks and the, and the preservation of the rocks from the about 67, 68 million years, all the way to the point in 66, 65, where the extinction event layer is, and also undisturbed the sediments um, above the, uh, the extinction event. So if, we, if scientists want to discover or understand the complexity uh, in a single location of what happened before, during, and after, uh, there's actually no place else in Western Canada that you can do that in. This is something we should go back, come back to next year. One cores are pretty uncommon. So it'd be exciting if that's what this is. Once again, a handful of large bones has paleontologists dreaming of what is below the surface. But much work stands between theory and proof. So just get out my GPS and mark the spot so we can find it again. 